Hey guys, it's Jack Diamond here. Recently, Brandon over at the Freddy W channel decided to start doing 3D Studio Max tutorials. Well, I've never been a big fan of Max myself. I've always used Lightwave 3D, and even though I'm not an expert by any means, uh, I've played with it a lot. I've never really done anything professionally with it, but I I've done a little bit of stuff, and I thought this would be a great opportunity for me to give you guys an introduction to Lightwave and also brush up on some of my own Lightwave skills. So I'm going to do my best to follow along with Brandon's tutorials the way he's doing 3ds max but i'm going to do them in lightwave just to uh, to show you the differences lightwave is a professional 3d application like max but it's more geared towards movies and television a lot of people are actually using it you can check out their website and see some of the big movies and big uh, video games and stuff that have actually been created using this software Lightwave's been used for some big budget movies like Avatar and Iron Sky, and also it's been used on TV shows like Walking Dead. If you want to work in the film and television industry as a 3D artist or animator, Lightwave is a really good program to use, so that's why I've learned it. Alright, so here we are in Lightwave version 11. We're in perspective mode here. And this is what Lightwave looks like. It's basically a stage area with one default camera that's been added automatically and one default light that's been added automatically. What we need to do is set up our camera first and foremost. So I'm going to click on Camera and click on Properties and I get this menu. I can dial these numbers in directly but for now I'm going to choose the type of camera and this is one of the cool features of Lightwave. You can actually select something called a real lens camera which allows you to dial in a real camera here and I shoot with a Canon digital SLR camera so I could actually pick Canon SLR and then choose the exact camera that matches my spec for example I shoot with an EOS 60D camera so I could select that I could even dial in the exact lens that I use when I'm shooting however the neat thing is is I don't actually have to do this at all because I can actually select from image and then just choose an image and Lightwave automatically populates all of my camera settings including resolution, focal length, and f-stop that I use to take this image and puts that directly into the camera settings and it's going to emulate that camera perfectly. One thing it's done is it's increased the resolution up to 5184 by 3456 which is what I shot the photograph at but I want to set this to a video resolution so I'm going to change this to HDTV 1920 by 1080 so I've got a full HD resolution that I'm going to be working with to increase my quality by anti-aliases setting I'm just going to set these uh, samples up to say 3 and then while I'm here I'm just going to change depth of field to off which will just speed up the process a little bit while I'm showing you these tutorials. So after I've set up my camera settings the next thing I want to do is place an image in the actual background of my shot so I'm going to go to compositing options and I'm going to choose that same image that I loaded into my real world camera as my background image and click close. You can't see it yet but that's because I'm in perspective mode so I'm just going to change this over to camera view and then there's one other thing I need to do just by clicking D on the keyboard to bring up my settings I can go to camera view background and change that to background image and now I'm looking straight through the camera at my actual scene the next thing I need to do is basically position the camera the same way it was positioned in the real world when I shot this picture down here in the bottom left corner you'll see X Y and Z positions for the camera are currently 0 0 and minus 5. X is the left to right, Y is the up and down, and Z is forward and backward in the shot. So I was not lying on the ground when I took this shot, but I was standing up. So I'm just going to put this at about 1.3 meters. That seems to be sufficient. And then I'm just going to use the rotate command to rotate the camera up into position. Uh, while I'm here, I'm also just going to rotate the scene so that it's uh, sort of more in line with the uh, perspective of the street. And there we go. 
One quick check you can make for yourself at this point is down here in the very bottom corner it says grid size is one meter, which basically means each one of these grids lying on the ground is one meter by one meter. And I remember from the day looking at this scene that if I were to actually have laid out a one meter by one meter grid on the ground, this is about what it would have looked like. So I think my settings are more or less matched. The next thing is to start adding some objects in the scene. So I'm going to use some of Modeler's or some of Lightwave's built-in modeling tools to create some geometry. I'm going to add a sphere to start with. And the sphere, I'm just going to use the default settings, 500 by 500 by 500 millimeters, which is about a half meter sphere, centered at the origin. And I'm just going to increase the number of sides to, say, about 36 by 36 or so. And I'm going to change the surface name to Gray Ball. And I'm also going to click on Save Object and OK. So I've added a gray ball into my scene, but where is it? Well, it's actually located at the origin, and my camera isn't looking at the origin at the moment. So if I go up to my top view, for instance, you'll see, if I zoom out here, that here's my ball in the scene and here's where the camera is looking. It's over here so it's probably seeing something in this range here but it's not actually seeing the ball. So I've got two options. I could move the ball over into the scene or I could move the camera so that it's looking at the origin and I think that's what I want to do because I like the idea of having the origin in a really nice convenient place. So I'm going to switch to camera mode and if I do that you can actually see what the field of view is. So I can click on T for move and move the camera. I could even go into camera mode directly here so I'm looking through the camera and I could position my origin at a very specific place. So I'm just gonna leave it right about there. That looks good. The next thing I want to do is add another object into my scene. So I'm going to create another sphere same settings, only this time I'm going to use the surface name mirror ball and I will save this object as well. Click OK. And how come the second mirror ball didn't show up? Well it did, but it went right over top of the other one. So I'm just going to drag it back a little bit. And uh, that looks pretty good. So the question you probably have is, how come they're not gray and mirrored like they should be? And that's because I haven't set any surfaces up for these objects yet. So let's go up to the surface editor. And now I have these two sphere objects, one of which has a gray ball surface on it, and one of which has a mirror ball surface on it. So for the gray ball surface, all I'm going to do is turn on the smoothing. And you can see the difference right away. This one is not smooth and this one is. It's just a shader that's been applied. For the mirror ball, I'm also going to turn on smoothing, but this one I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to drop the diffuse down to zero, and I'm going to increase the reflection up to 100%. So I've created a 100% reflective ball. So you're probably asking yourself, how come that ball is not actually reflecting anything? And that's because I'm only in this texture shaded solid mode, which is giving me a basic representation of my scene. I could render the scene out to see what this would actually look like, but there's a nice built-in feature that's exclusive to Lightwave called the VPR, which is a virtual rendering engine, which basically does a render for you right in the viewport automatically. The nice thing is you can even work directly in this view just by clicking on an object and say dragging it around. It does a, uh, a sort of automatically updating preview of your scene and when you let go, it just uh, enhances until it's, uh, it's fully rendered. So it's a really quick way to work, and I like it a lot, and I use it all the time. So before we go any further, I'm going to save this scene so that uh, nothing happens if I, if I have a crash or anything like that. One of the things to do is to use the Save All command, which saves not only your, uh, your scene, but saves all the objects and everything saves the surfaces. One of the things that's important to know about Lightwave is that uh, surfaces are saved with objects and scene files only save references to objects so they don't save the objects themselves so everything is treated as its own file. 
So I have some objects composited into this scene, but unfortunately they don't look really realistic right now. The uh, mirror ball is reflecting the other ball, but it's not uh, reflecting the environment, and neither of these balls is actually casting a shadow. So let's fix that. We have to add a ground plane, which will catch the shadows from the objects. So again, using the built-in modeling tools, this time I'll just create a ground plane using the ground plane object. I'm just going to make it about 20 meters by 20 meters, centered on the origin, and click Save Object and OK. And there it is. I'm going to do another quick Save All here. Yes, yes. And now we're getting better. So we have the ground catching shadows, the ground is reflected in the mirror ball, and things are happening but uh, the ground doesn't look really realistic in this shot. So maybe we should fix that. If I go to the surface editor, select the ground plane, here's another really neat feature. This is something called the node editor. And if I enable nodes by clicking the check mark and then click the node editor, you get an interface that looks very similar to something you might have seen if you've used uh, 3ds Max or, uh, or other programs that support this node uh, editing type capability. I'm just I use the node editor for this because there's a special node that I can add which is called the shadow catcher which basically replaces all the properties in this material and just makes it into a material that is invisible except for its shadows. So that's it. Just like that I've applied the shadow catcher node to the ground plane and it effectively disappears because it's being mapped with the camera data here. So all I've got is the shadows, and looking good. So I'll do a quick save again. I like to save often because this program, it it crashes, not a lot, uh, but it does crash from time to time. To be honest with you, I've found it crashes more often when I'm doing screen recording than uh, when I'm not. It almost never crashes uh, when I'm not screen recording, but since I've been recording this tutorial, it's actually crashed about five times on me. So uh, we'll see how that's, this goes. The next step is basically to fix the lighting in the shot because the light looks like it's coming directly overhead. These shadows are kind of harsh and they're kind of dark. So let's fix that. I'm going to go into texture shaded solid mode again and I'm going to modify the light properties. So here's the default light that comes in Lightwave. It's what's called a distant light. If I click on properties, you'll see that's actually a distant light. I can grab that light and move it around in 3D space. I can also rotate it, change the direction of the light, where the light is actually coming from, and I seem to recall it was sort of coming from overhead on this date, kind of like this a little bit, but it, the distant light doesn't really do it justice, so I'm actually going to change this to an area light so that I can get some slightly softer shadows going. And uh, you can't really see that in the texture shaded solid mode, but when I go into the VPR mode you'll see that a lot better. So I want to position that light a little bit better before I do that though. So I'm going to move out of this view and into perspective view. And I'm going to take this light and I'm going to move it up. So just sort of away from my shot and maybe over and then here's a, a cool feature here. I can actually use the light view to look through my light and position it directly. You know, aim it exactly the way it should be aiming and things like that. Go back to camera view and I can actually see it. Turn on the VPR and I should get a much more realistic rendering of my scene now. I have some softer shadows. The shadows could probably be a little harder if we try to look at the shadows in behind. And also, we still need to work with uh, with reflecting the environment here. So one cool thing that I can actually do here is use something called a spherical environment map, which is basically a ball that surrounds the entire scene outside of what you'd actually see, but it has the environment mapped onto it. That way, it will actually reflect onto this ball, and you'll see that if I actually select it. So let's go up to my backdrop options here and there's a feature called add environment and I'm going to use something called image world for this and then 
basically you basically pick the object so I have a spherical image map loaded so my spherical image map is called street sphere it's a TGA file or a targa file and Lightwave likes those and uh, there I've added it and you can see it sort of reflecting there already you might uh, want to adjust the pitch or the uh, offsets of these things just to to make the object or the uh, the reflection look a little bit better but uh, I won't worry about it for right now right now I'm actually seeing almost exactly what I want to see just to make that mirror ball look a little bit more realistic I'm gonna modify its surface again just by adding a little bit of diffuse back into it and you'll see what happens if I crank this up what happens to the ball is it gets really light but I don't want to go that high I just want to go maybe 30 percent or 25 percent just to give it a little bit of definition around the edges so it doesn't blend in directly okay looking good next thing I want to do is really bounce some light off the ground because I only have this one light in my scene and it's shining down on the ball but there's nothing really lighting it from underneath well there's something called indirect illumination or more specifically radiosity which I'm gonna add in and you get to that through the light properties menu and going to the global setting for global illumination and I'm gonna turn on radiosity just by clicking a check mark and right away it's bounced a whole bunch of light into the scene made things look a lot more realistic uh, my shadows have gotten a little bit on the bright side here and actually I think uh, my diffuse setting is actually affecting this uh, ball a little too much as well so what I'm gonna do just to start is turn the intensity of this down a little bit and maybe a little bit more And what I'm trying to do here is match the shadows in the rest of the scene so there's different amounts of light that bounce on different days and that actually looks pretty good right there uh, and now I'm gonna go back to my surface editor and mess with that mirror ball again maybe turn it down even more to like 10 percent or something and uh, yeah that looks pretty good so there you have it I've basically rendered a complete scene here I've got a mirror ball and a regular just gray diffuse ball sitting in the scene they look like they're actually there in the scene so that's the basics of using Lightwave I hope you guys were entertained at the very least and don't worry if you fell behind don't worry if you did not know what I was doing at any time I'm going to go through this stuff very slowly and in a lot more detail I really just wanted to get it out there and uh, get you guys working in a higher-end program like Lightwave once you have the basics down you can really go to town and you can create some really cool and really amazing shots it's really easy to add other objects into the scene is what I'm trying to say so I hope you guys loved this tutorial and uh, I hope you're looking forward to the next one I know I am take care I'll see you next time if you'd like to see more behind-the-scenes videos or visual effects tutorials, consider subscribing to this channel. You can also leave a comment below telling me exactly what type of video you'd like to see. If you want to help me out, you can like this video or share it on your favorite social media sites. You can even follow me on Twitter. Thanks for watching. I'm Jack Diamond, and I'll see you next time.